And so uh, after the fight with uh, Romero, there were some talks of potentially steroids, him looking very good for being 41. Uh, I think recently he posted a, a letter from USADA, I guess, giving him a, a clean bill of health. Uh, how do you respond to that, if you saw it at all? Um, yeah, uh, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, 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 I don't know why that's a thing, to, to, to post your, um, your, your, clean, your, your USADA certificate saying you're you're clean <laughs> you're supposed to be <laughs> yeah, i don't true. i don't understand but um yeah good on him i guess <laughs> <laughs> fair enough strategy for dc is the same as every other fight he walks forward throwing long combinations which is rare for a lot of fighters, a lot of fighters throw single shots, but DC ultimately is looking to clinch. So he walks through it, throwing single shots, utilizes a lot of head movement, and then he closes the distance. Then he gets his hands on you and he takes you down. Once he gets you down, he lies on top of you. He looks for you to turtle, to get back to your feet, get onto all fours, onto your knees and your elbows. When you do that, he'll, he'll grab your neck and try and choke you out unconscious. That's his game plan every time. And if yeah. he can't get you down, just closing the distance and swinging the shots is what he does. Trying to land bombs, trying to rock you, trying to take you down. Rinse and repeat until either he gets the finish or the time stops and you've been more effective and you win the fight by decision. So that's his game plan. Steve Pays is a little different. He's got to be careful that he, when he throws those long arms that DC doesn't slip off to the left or the right, you know, counter them and then get his arms around the body lock. But Steve Pays, you know, 80-inch reach, use that jab, use the one-two, Bum, bum, stick and move a little bit, wear him out, you know, maybe look for the knockout. I mean, the last fight showed that DC can get knocked out, which is surprising. I mean, anyone can get knocked out, let's be honest. But when you look at DC, the way that he's built, you know, he's very, he's not short, but for a heavyweight, he's a shorter guy. He's very, very compact, a barrel-esque uh, build, almost no neck whatsoever. And he's got a big, big head like a bowling ball. But Jones proved that he can be knocked out. And obviously... Stipe has got a habit of knocking out heavyweights after heavyweight after heavyweight. So, you know, th that is definitely a scenario that we might see. Not saying it will, not saying I'm hoping for that. I'm just saying that is a scenario which is definitely a possibility. To me, this is the first real super fight in UFC history. Like G GSP versus Bisping, it was kind of it was such a weird one. Didn't make a lot of sense. It was random. Um, that was whatever. They're, they're both older. With this one here, I feel like it's the first actual super fight in the UFC. And maybe not pay per view wise, maybe not being huge draws wise, but I think you have the light heavyweight champion of the world, and then you have the most successful heavyweight champion of the world, and they're fighting each other. And one used to be undefeated at heavyweight. Stipe's been on this fucking tear. So it's a, an actual super, super fight. I love the fight. I absolutely love the fight. When I look at it, my initial thoughts are, why do I always doubt Stipe? How could, and I do pick him to win, but I'm, I'm always like, God, I don't, I don't know how he's going to do it. I don't know how he's going to get it done. And he gets it done. Stipe and DC are very similar in their styles. So a lot of people will point out when you look at this fight, with your bed on it, or you're talking about around the water cooler with your friends at work or whatever, people go, well, Stipe is the bigger guy. He has a reach advantage. He has knockout power. Um, you know, he has wrestling, stuff like that. True, he, he does have a reach advantage. He's the bigger man. DC, that's all he knows. He's never been the bigger guy. And, you know, when he fought John Jones, had a, he had a much bigger reach advantage. When he fought Gus Finn, had a much bigger reach advantage. The only time DC loses is when he faces a guy named John Jones. Well, John Jones ain't fighting this Saturday. John Jones is a more complete mixed martial artist than Stipe. Uh, he's a more um, kind of dynamic striker than, striker than Stipe. Stipe, what he does is box. He only boxes. He does not throw kicks, which if I'm looking at any chink in DC's armor, it's kicks. He gets high when he backs out, uh, which gives him, he's susceptible to huge kicks. 
That's how he got knocked out when he fought John Jones, which is why John go- Jones, when you watch tape on DC, which a lot of guys will say, oh, he's prone to head kicks, which is why before that fight, John goes, I'm going to knock him out with a head kick. There's a reason for that. There's tendencies that guys do, and you see these holes in their game. 